What do you think of when you hear the word hobo or homeless bohemian? What characteristics come to mind? Do you think of nameless drifters, someone to be feared, who carries everything they own in a bundle tied to a stick as they illegally jump trains? Well, many do, and the subculture of the hobo is far more colorful and complex than one may realize. When the Civil War ended in 1865, many veterans not only found themselves on the losing side of war, but many struggled to find jobs or any type of opportunity. But instead of resting on their laurels and begging for money, these brave people went searching for work, secretly jumping on trains to seek out a better life, and the hobo was born. During this time, there was a mass exodus from the East Coast with a surge of humanity seeking out new opportunities of the American West. This westward expansion was fueled by the allure of the earlier gold rush and later the oil boom at the turn of the century. As the country healed from years of conflict, America's infrastructure spread like a spider web as thousands of miles of new railway was built and the first transcontinental railway was completed in 1869, connecting the Atlantic and Pacific Oceans. At first, the hobo was one who sought out work by traveling on trains wherever there was opportunity. However, hobo culture began to shift as many fell in love with the lifestyle and were homeless by choice. They rejected mainstream society and craved the adventure and freedom that the railways offered. A hobo prides themselves on self-sufficiency. They're highly independent and extremely inventive. The original hobos who were veterans of the military and used to uncomfortable situations used their survival skills they learned to their advantage as they traveled across the United States. Hobos also created their own lexicon and dialect, many of these words we still commonly use today, such as a knee shaker, and this was when a large tray of food was given to a hobo and they would have to hold the heavy tray on their knee. This was commonly done out of charity from a homeowner or in exchange for work. To conventional society, a jungle is a tropical place with lots of plants and animals and is relatively inhospitable, but to hobos, a jungle is a place to be, it is a place to live. It's an entire encampment set up by hobos in the woods or around small cities or towns where they would be able to take care of each other. There was also a hierarchy of older hobos and if you wanted to live there, you'd have to ask for permission from the older resident hobo. The hobo lifestyle is still and was an extremely dangerous lifestyle. They would have to run from the bulls which isn't something that happened only in Spain. A bull was actually trained security that would patrol the tracks or regular police officers. And if they caught you, they would either arrest you or worse, beat you. And not to mention the constant risk of getting crushed by a massive train. With all of these dangers, the hobos developed their own language and code, hobo hieroglyphics. These many symbols, usually painted or drawn under bridges or on outbuildings around town, could literally tell the hobo everything they needed to know about the town they were in. One symbol could tell you if the area was safe or where the work or food was located. Another symbol could even tell you if this was a dangerous place or unfriendly to hobos. Hobo numbers waxed and waned in the early 20th century, but spiked after the Great Depression and multiple world wars. As automobiles became cheaper and public transport became more accessible, many didn't have to rely on the railways to find work and hobo numbers began to decline, leaving only the most diehard of the group still hopping trains and avoiding the bulls. The Internet Age and Hobo Renaissance With the advent of social media platforms and YouTube, a new type of hobo was born, the content creator hobo. Some still looked for work while filming and sharing their train experiences, but many, especially the younger generation, are filming their train hopping adventures for content creation and monetizing what they call their hobo lifestyle and experience. Are these still real hobos? Why or why not? What really makes a true hobo? Are these posers or is this the natural evolution and progression of this subculture? 
Some of these photos I've already shown you, but it shows the progression of hobos throughout the years, ending with Hobo Shoestring, quite possibly the most famous hobo of our day. Hobo Shoestring has been a hobo for over 30 years since the age of 17. He fell in love with the freedom, excitement, and danger the rails provided as he sought meaning in his life. He wasn't a hobo out of necessity, but by choice. He's ridden over 2,700,000 miles of train rails in 49 states and 8 Canadian provinces. Shoestring has amassed a die-hard following on YouTube as he shares his stories and experiences of the open rails and the danger to eager fans. Notice in this photo Hobo Shoestring's left hand and lack of fingers. A few years ago, while attempting to jump off a train, he fell and one of the massive train wheels immediately severed a number of his fingers on his left hand. An estimation of YouTube ad revenue he receives yearly is in the range of $1,782 monthly or $21,384 per year after YouTube takes their 40% cut. If the work is in fact the act of being a hobo, is this still in line with hobo tradition? Hobo Shoestring is just one example of hundreds of content creators on YouTube who film their cross-country adventures by train, by foot, by bike, hitchhiking, sleeping rough, some making well into the six figures per year. Although the motivations and ethos of the hobo has shifted, the hobo lifestyle has now become itself a job or profession, as millions get a voyeuristic view into a very alien lifestyle to their own. Societal Adoption of Hobo Culture I personally struggle with fashion, but for those interested in fashion, I'm sure you're then aware of the massive trend a few years ago which still exists the hobo chic or boho fashion. And I'm sure many of us have either owned a hobo bag or at least wanted a hobo bag from one of the many retailers at the mall. This one's only $3,000, but we all know where the original came from. If you're looking to revamp your wardrobe, here's some great examples of the trendy hobo chic look. This one even has their sleeping mat ready, which also doubles as a yoga mat for those hard days on the railroad. It is clear that the hobo subculture is here to stay. Every year, the largest hobo convention is held in Britt, Iowa, where for a few days, hobos and non-hobos alike descend upon the town for the past 121 years. They even declare king and queen of the hobos, who carry the title until next year. There will always be something romantic and appealing about leaving your old life behind and jumping on a train with nothing but miles of open track ahead. In today's society, there is such emphasis on planning, careers, finance, appearances. But what is truly important in life? What makes us happy? There is something very agreeable with the simple needs and lives of hobos. Ultimate freedom. <laughs>